always begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. And with your spirit. I'm Monsignor John Ecker. I'm the pastor of St. Paul Cathedral and the Vicar General of the Diocese of Yakima. It's my privilege and pleasure to be with you today as we televise this Mass for the 13th Sunday in Ordinary Time. But to begin, we ask the Lord to help us be truly repentant for our own failings and sins. Lord Jesus, you call us to holiness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You bid us follow you by serving one another. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are with us always to guide and direct us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light. Grant, we pray, that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Kings. One day, Elisha came to Shunem, where there was a woman of influence who urged him to dine with her. Afterward, whenever he passed by, he used to stop there to dine. So she said to her husband, I know that Elisha is a holy man of God. Since he visits us often, let us arrange a little room on the roof and furnish it for him with a bed, table, chair, and lamp, so that when he comes to us, he can stay there. 
Sometime later, Alicia arrived and stayed in the room overnight. Later, Alicia asked, can something be done for her? His servant, Gehazi, answered, yes. She has no son, and her husband is getting on in years. Alicia said, call her. When the woman had been called and stood at the door, Alicia promised, this time next year, you will be fondling a baby son. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. If, then, we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Lord, Jesus said to his apostles, Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves sons or daughters more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Whoever receives you receives me, and whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. Whoever receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, and whoever receives a righteous man because he is a righteous man will receive a righteous man's reward. And whoever gives only a cup of cold water to one of these little ones to drink, because the little one is a disciple, amen I say to you, he will surely not lose his reward. The Gospel of the Lord. Whoever does not take up his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. I want to tell you a story. but It's a story that people at St. Paul Cathedral have heard lots of times. So if you happen to be at Mass the last Sunday, uh, you've heard this already, you can take a break and take 10 minutes out and uh, kind of sleep for a while. But for everybody else, I want to tell you a story, a true story, something that happened to me. Several weeks ago, I got a call when I was in my office one day, and the fellow at the end of the line said to me, are you Father Ecker? I said, yes, I am. The same one that served with the Marines over in Vietnam, um, 1968 and 9. I said, yep, the same one. He said, well, I've been trying to get a hold of you for 50 years. And I went to my dentist last week, and I told him my problem. I've been trying to get a hold of you. And uh, I'm not very adept at any of these electronic messaging machines. So he went away and he, the and he looked up in his computer and he came back with your telephone number. And that's why I'm calling you. He said, you probably won't remember me. My name is Bill Schreiber. I said, you know, I really do remember you. And I've often used you and your life as an example in my homilies, particularly around Thanksgiving. He was a close friend of mine in Vietnam. He was stationed with the uh, office or the um, company of headquarters company. He was a mortar man. And I was the chaplain with the Marines and uh, we were in the same group. We'd often get together with, for uh, breaking open sea rations together and combining them with little disinfectant, we called it ketchup, and we'd um, eat together. And um, one day, they were out on patrol, his company, particular company, the mortar people, and I got word after they were out there that Bill, my friend, uh, was severely injured. They were camped up in a, in a camped out in a, an old tea plantation and into that room where he was resting, a mortar came and exploded. And it killed his buddy, and it took out one of his eyes, Bill's eyes, and hurt him. His shoulder was all messed up, and his leg was too. Well, I was out on combat duty with the Marines, and I couldn't just leave. But I asked a friend of mine, another chaplain, a Protestant chaplain, I said, when you go out to the hospital ship, but that's where I heard he was. Would you please look up Bill? 
And so he did. And he came back and I asked him, what, what's the news on Bill, my friend? And he said, well, he still is unable to talk. This was like two or three weeks later. He still is unable to talk to anyone. He doesn't speak. He's really been wounded badly. Um, I was sad to hear that. And um, that's the last I heard of him for about a year. My next assignment after Vietnam was the headquarters of the Marine Corps in Arlington, Virginia. And I'm going by the barracks one day, and down the steps of the barracks came bounding Bill Schreiber. He said, hey, Father Ecker. I looked up, and there's Bill. I was just amazed, amazed. He looked great. I found out later he had an artificial eye, and they had operated on him to fix as best they could his shoulder and his leg. I said to him, come on, go out to dinner tonight. Have a few beers or whatever, and we'll have dinner. And you can tell me your story. And he said, I want to talk to you. I want to tell you what happened to me. He said, I woke up after being knocked unconscious for a couple of weeks on the hospital ship. And I recognized and realized I was missing one eye. I didn't have an eye. And my shoulder was messed up, I was in pain. But I was so angry, he said, I just vowed never to talk to anybody else again. I was never going to speak again. So he said, I went that way for a couple of weeks. And they brought us to Tacoma, to um, McCord Air Force Base, where we were overnight waiting to get into our planes to go to the hospital that was closest to our homes, and there were Marines, wounded Marines, on both sides of this wide corridor, long, wide corridor. And I looked down at both ends, and I hadn't spoken to anyone. This has been several weeks now since I've been wounded. I was so angry. So, he said, they came along to get us. This Marine next to me, in the bed next to me, he said, hey, good morning, Marine, how you doing? He said, I still wouldn't speak. I hadn't spoken to anyone. And then they came to take us out to the plains to go to our different destinations, the hospitals. So they took him out first. He was next to me. And when they took him out, he had no legs. He had lost both legs in a terrible accident, a bombing in Vietnam. And I wondered to myself, how can he be so joyful, having lost both of his legs? And I said to myself, Bill Schreiber, you're a damn fool. He said, what have you done? You've lost one eye, big deal. You can get along without that. He said, I started to cry. And I cried for a whole day. But then I decided I would speak again. And I was healed really began to do the healing power on myself. And because of my conversations with these different Marines and different people that I met, I began to restore my health because I was over my bitterness and my terrible anger as a result of which I vowed never to speak to anyone again. <clears throat> that was the beginning of my recuperation. You know, Jesus says to us in the gospel today, take up your cross and follow me. And if you don't take up your cross, you're not worthy of me. All of us have crosses. Nothing's perfect in life. Some people, particularly today, are very lonely. And they very feel much, very much alone. They feel almost abandoned. I talked to someone through um, Skype or one of those um, wonderful wonders of, of a conversation that we have now in, in the hospital, who was guilty of, who, who has, rather was, um, was bearing the effects of the coronavirus. He was very sick. But I was able to talk to him about how lonely he was, that his family couldn't gather around him. Lots of people, lots of people are going through this today. We've all got crosses of some sort or other, whether they're psychological or physical, or mental, whatever they might be. Maybe we've lost a job. Maybe we're afraid of the future, of our own security. 
We've all got crosses to bear. But you know what? God never permits us to take up a cross unless we can bear it. It reminds me of a, a story that's told about this man who was felt burdened down by the crosses he was asked to bear. So he went up to St. Peter, who had a, a desk outside the gates of heaven. He said, um, St. Peter, I'd like to change my cross, exchange my cross, which is so heavy for me, for some other cross. Can I do that? And Peter said, oh, sure. And he led him into a huge warehouse that he couldn't even see the end of. And it was full of crosses, made of metal, precious metals, made of iron, made of wood, made of steel, made of paper even. But there was something wrong with all of them. He went through and spent the whole day there. And when he came out of the, when he's coming out of the uh, hall, the big warehouse really, he um, stopped. Just before he went out the door, he saw a little tiny cross behind the door. So he picked it up. And he said, hey, St. Peter, this is the one I want to take for me, with me. This is the one that fits me the best. And St. Peter laughed. And the fellow said, Peter, St. Peter, what are you laughing at? And he said, that's the one you came in with. We sometimes think that the crosses we're asked to bear are so huge. But you know, God never permits us to bear up under a cross we can't take. I remember when I was a seminarian eons ago. I was in the choir, the seminary choir. I was the organ, the accompanist. And um, we went to a, a hospital called the Hospital for the Incurables back in Massachusetts. And we were up on a balcony overlooking this large chapel. And we were singing from up there. And they wheeled in this young man who was paralyzed from the neck down. He was about my age, probably about 20, 19 or 20. A handsome young man. But he couldn't walk. He was paralyzed, they told me later, from the neck down. And I waved to him from the balcony. He, he smiled back. He said, that moment, I felt so appreciative of the blessings God had given me. And I felt so badly for that young man who was there probably for the rest of his life in a hospital, unable to attain fullness of what God might have set for him. Take up your cross. Bear your cross patiently. Whatever those crosses might be, God never gives us or permits us to take up crosses that are too big for us or too rough for us. Not at all. Never. He's with us always. He's with us always to help carry that cross just like Simon came to carry Jesus' cross on the hill to Calvary. So Jesus is with you and me. And he helps us to carry whatever crosses we're asked to bear. You feel sorry for yourself someday, having maybe a pity party for yourself? Go to a convalescent facility or a nursing home. And just look around. We are so blessed. You and I are so blessed. Even at my advanced age, I can still go out and run a couple of miles a day. I'm really slow, probably as slow as cold molasses, but um, I still do that. I can still do it. Why? Because God has permitted me to keep my health to such a degree that even at my ancient age, I can still do that. I'm so grateful. You know, we all have crosses, but none of them are too big. None of the two are too massive that we can't go and carry them. Know that and have confidence that God, Jesus Christ, is always with us, enabling us and helping us to carry our crosses. And now we profess our faith together 
by responding loudly and clearly to each question, I do. And so I ask you, my brothers and sisters, do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Thank you. And do you believe in his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who came into this world, suffered and died for us, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? And do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. This is our faith, the faith of the Church, and we are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Yeah. And now, Heavenly Father, we come before you with confidence, with the knowledge that you will help us and grant what we pray for in faith. For all Christians, that we die to sin and live for God in Christ Jesus, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For governors and lawmakers, that they respect freedom of religion in all their votes and decisions, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For travelers and summer vacationers, that they make time for Sunday Mass and daily prayer, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our nation, as we prepare to celebrate Independence Day, that we be thankful for all who have given service to keep our country free. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our diocesan family as children of light, that we strive to follow the bright light of truth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all those who are victims of the coronavirus and those who care for them, for first responders and those who put their lives on the line to take care of us, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are victims of racial injustice, prejudice, and hatred, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. Great and good God, we thank you for all the blessings you give us and that we so often take for granted. Help us always to be mindful that we are called to reach out to one another and to help them to bear their crosses in life, just like you help us. We ask this always through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. O God, who graciously accomplished the effects of your mysteries, grant, we pray, that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you so love the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours, that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim. glorified, O God, who love the human race and always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love, and when as once for his disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. And we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us and granted by the power of the spirit of your love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your son in whose body and blood we have communion bring your church lord to perfect faith and charity together with francis our pope joseph our bishop all bishops priests and deacons and the entire people you have made your own Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as the living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people might be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in your presence and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, her spouse, the apostles and martyrs, St. Paul and all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Now, as brothers and sisters in the Lord, at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of God, glory and ours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit.
Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Bless the Lord, O oh, oh, my soul, and all within me is holy name. We invite you now to make a spiritual communion, those of you who are watching this and joining in our celebration having a definite and very intense devotion and desire to receive the Lord, even though you can't receive him in the Eucharist, it's not exactly the same, but the Lord will come to you in return for that great desire. And if you also have a true sorrow for any offenses or sins you might have committed or things you forgot, God is so forgiving, he forgives everything. And so we invite you to make that spiritual communion by intensifying that desire you have to be uni reunited and united once again with Jesus Christ our Lord. <clears throat>
Let us pray. May the divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life, O Lord, we pray, that bound to you in lasting charity, we may bear fruit that lasts forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, all of our parishes now have restored weekend masses. They're held outdoors, particularly in the Yakima County, because we're way far behind the other counties as far as getting our numbers down to a manageable state. But the masses are being celebrated each week outside. And um, we encourage you to come if you want. There's no obligation. Our bishop has dispensed us from the obligation for the foreseeable and even maybe non-foreseeable future. But you're more than welcome to come and join us if you'd like. You must wear masks, of course, number one. And secondly, you must keep that social distancing, distance between you and other members of other households by at least six feet away. So we hope you will come to participate in that if you feel up to it. If you're infirm or sick or you don't feel up to it, please don't feel obliged to come. I just want to extend the invitation on behalf of all of our parishes of Central Washington. Also, we have resumed hearing rec confessions, reconciliation, on Saturday afternoons here at the cathedral at 4 o'clock. You need to line up again out in the courtyard, not inside, um, and keep that respectable distance between you. We don't want it to be the source of anyone, because of us, um, catching the uh, virus. And we thank you again for joining us today. It's a real pleasure to be with you. And all of us at the Cathedral Parish and the Diocese, thank you for your participation and your continued support of our church through your generous donations, both the Diocese and our parish community. The Mass is ended, go in peace. Thanks be to 